Hey everybody, thank you for being here on All Access Live with Kevin Rankin. I'm really excited about today's show because we had this scheduled a little while back and like everybody else's schedule in the music business, man, it's up and it's in flux and you got to roll with everything. And my guest is so busy, man, it's awesome. But before I even tell you about who that is, let me ask you, if you're watching this on anything else other than YouTube, do this right now. Go to the link below, go to youtube.com slash at access Kevin, subscribe to the channel, make sure you like this video. If you become a member, you can also join that channel and you get exclusive access to some of the episodes that I have that are not privy to everybody that just subscribes. So you'll see the new episode that I got coming up with Kelly Kigi at his house. Um, Cy Kernan from The Fix just did an episode. We had Midge Ewer from Ultravox. Lots of great ones coming up. And uh, you can also check out the 279 other episodes that I have at the channel. So go to that channel, subscribe, like it. If you decide you want to join, I appreciate it. We appreciate your support. And this show wouldn't even be around right now if it weren't for this sponsor below. Go to fivestarguitars.com. Five Star is based in Beaverton, Oregon, which means that they have no sales tax if you order. And the link below, fivestarguitars.com slash all access live, gives you 15% off everything you see. So you're going to save 15% by using the promo code. You're going to save by not paying for sales tax. And if you were at the NAMM show and you're a musician, you may have also seen that uh, they've been recognized as the number one music merchant in North America. So, Five Star Guitars, thank you for your help. And now, let me tell you, my guest today, um, I mentioned in the promo for this, he is actually, I would say, on the Mount Rushmore of bass players for the music industry. And uh, you might know him, of course, from Doc, and uh, you'll know him from the last 20 years of Foreigner. But he also has the end machine. He's got uh, Black Swan. He's got Pilsen Lynch. And um, he's also a very handsome yoga instructor. So all the way from his studio, I've got Jeff Pilsen. How you doing, my friend? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I, now that I get... is the number one music merchant in the country, though. Well, that's well, pretty cool. You know, the, the next time you're in Portland, man, you just got to get your guitars there, right? I love Portland. So I'm going and I'm signing up. <laughs> you and and you, I know you got history here, right? So you had some yeah. some time in Longview as a high school guy. I went to I went to junior high and high school in Longview. Exactly. Um, most people that are in the Portland area, when they first heard that I was going to have you on the show, they like to claim you as a Portlander. You know, so I mean, any, anything Northwest gets Jeff Pilson, right? <laughs> okay, I'll take it. <laughs> and I had your old bandmate on a couple weeks ago. I had Randy Hansen on the show, who oh, says he loves. Yeah, speaking yeah. of the North. Oh, I, th I think about Randy all the time. I mean, such a phenomenal player and performer, and and he's just a great guy. And, you know, he's he's one of those guys that everybody needs to discover. You know, yeah. everybody needs to go find because totally. he's so great. Yeah, well, anyways. But you know this, like, because you did a long time. I, You know, Kevin Philo, also his manager, right? Kevin, he uh, it was his birthday yesterday. Kevin said, uh, please yes. tell Jeff, I love him not just for the amazing musician, but because of the human he is. And everybody well, that's the thing. I mean, Kevin and Randy and I are actually tight on a whole other level. It's it's a deep, 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 long-term friendship. So, yes. But, Jeff, honestly, a lot of people consider that with you. Everybody that I talk to has these feelings about you that feel like it transcends the music biz. You know? Oh, that well, that's nice. I mean... Listen, it is all about relationships. So if in the end, if you make good relationships out of all this, you know, something's good. We win. <laughs> yeah, we win. God, you know, um, I, it, you mentioned like everybody should know about Randy. When I had that episode on, um, I also do some playing with Jennifer Batten. Jennifer and I, huh. played, you know, I play drums with her on gigs. And huh. When she knew that I did the Randy conversation, she said she had seen him. She was one of the first guys that she saw use a wireless way back in the day. Yeah. Know? And she was just a, a young punk. And uh, um, and then he had talked about how Eddie Van Halen had first discovered the Floyd Rose tremolo because of him at the show. Oh, absolutely. No, no, absolutely. No, no, no. In fact, Randy, when I was playing with Randy, which is this is 40 plus years ago, but he had the very ver first Floyd Rose guitar. I mean, because Floyd Rose was his sound man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and and, you know, kind of designed it for Randy. So. Yeah, when he showed it to Eddie, it was a brand new thing, and Eddie flipped out. So yeah, that was man big club I, days, man. Well, yeah, I mean, you think about that, like, because Randy is one of those guys. In the conversation we had, um, he's recognized everywhere. I saw videos of Vi talking about how he saw him 
way back in Long Island when he was a younger guy too, and and how Randy just blew his mind. All these guys that are at some sort of status, right, some level of a mm-hmm. Randy doesn't seem to have any grudge at all about not having maybe the notoriety that a lot of those guys have. Yeah, it, it, I, I think he's a, he's evolved past that. Yeah, he really has, yeah. because in his mind, I I think honestly, in in a sense. I mean, there is a part of Randy that knows he deserves that. Yeah. He knows that. He knows yeah. he, he does deserve that. He knows he he did influence a lot of people. He knows he is great. You know, he knows all that. Yeah. But there's also a part of him that I think that has come to realize that the notoriety, the fame, all that kind of stuff don't add to the music. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. And Randy is so about the music. Um, so I think just over time, he's just kind of, accepted like hey i got a great life i get to wake up in the morning and play music and i get to you know go to bed at night playing music and 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 you know it's no different than any of us you know i mean any notoriety you know it happens in a short period of time and it goes away quick that's not the long-term stuff that's not the stuff that really sticks with you um so yeah i mean randy's way evolved beyond that (laughs) has have have most of these guys you know i mean george same thing george has evolved beyond that too you know you know, one thing about George, too, um, and I would think that anybody that's watching this show, they might be a subscriber in the channel and they watch a lot of them as regulars. But if anybody doesn't know, right, so we could talk a little bit about your history. I mean, Jeff Pilson, 40 years ago, was this seminal creature in this uh, this 80s rock scene that was really like blowing up, right? The Sunset Strip era, man, like, you know, there was no bigger bands and like Motley Crue and, and you know, and <laughs> and dock it right i mean really you guys were i remember seeing monsters of rock of course 1988 you know that mm-hmm. drove from i'm from montana originally drove mm-hmm. to spokane washington to come and see mm-hmm. you play and uh mm-hmm. um and everything about your show you know because you guys were sort of middle slot right i think you had kingdom come open in that show yep you had the metallicas and scorpions we 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 were we were right in the middle it was yeah. kingdom come the metallica then us then scorpions then van That's halen right and and so you got, you know, for festivals, you were sort of the dusk time, right? Yeah. So you had the yeah. big light show, didn't have the big production. You just brought it with instrumentation yeah. and songs, you know. Yeah. And so you had to sell it, you know. Yeah. And so the, I think at that point too, I mean, that was uh, you guys were, you know, like on all cylinders. That band was so hot. So so this is where I first discovered Jeff, right? They, they, oh, okay. They, they, you guys were out there watching, and one thing that blows my mind is looking at your history and looking at what you've done over the last 20 years, you've been with foreigner, but everybody that's involved in the business knows you for not just your musicianship and your contributions to a lot of the songs, but your character. Oh, so well, thank you. Um, that's a huge thing. You know, yeah. you talked about uh, George evolving. And one thing I see about George too, is that he's involved with the native American community right mm-hmm. down in Arizona and, yep. You know, so it's outside the glitz and the glamour of the rock and roll biz. Yeah. And so, and and I think you talked about not just evolving, right? Because you really, I mean, hopefully we've all gotten to that point where you're not holding grudges and you're, you let go of resentments of music yeah. fans back in the, you know, in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope. But I'm curious to know about how yoga came into place for you because mm. man, really that that's a big part of your life, right? It, it is indeed. Um, it came into place in about 1978. I was living in Northern California and I was living at a guy's house um, who I was in a band with, you know, we were in a cover band. And um, anyway, he was at work. I was home during the day. And I was just doing push-ups, and all of a sudden, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I was only 20 years old, you know? Mm. So, I mean, but I, I fall on the ground and I mean, I can't move. I absolutely can't move. I am paralyzed for three hours until he gets home. Long story short, I, in that three hours, I'm telling myself, I'm, this ain't going to happen again. I'm not going to let this happen again. So I kind of looked around and people said, and I remembered that an old sound man of ours had said, yeah, you should try yoga. It's really, it's really, you know, really helps energize and, you know, it's really good for focus and and also makes you feel good. And so that just kind of crossed my mind. I literally went to a store, bought Richard Hittleman's 30 day yoga, you know, course and started doing it the next day and have been doing it ever since. (laughs) No, And that was 98, you said? 78. 78. Oh, wow. Even before the DACA days. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, so this is a selfish question, man. I gotta ask, right? Mm -hmm. As a drummer, and you know the way the European shows are. You know, we're fortunate in the U.S., man. If we got backline, you show up, and I, I show up on my gigs, and gear's there. We do those England dates, three stories up. You're carrying gear upstairs. You not, and so my back went out last year. This time in England, I was in the hospital for two days in the U.K. and yeah. uh, major back issues. I've heard over and over again that yoga's got to be the thing that I do. We're on the road right now. We're doing 100 shows this year, man, and I got to do something. So right. As an introduction, instead of jumping right in, you know, to 24 hours, you know, a day in yoga, what do you recommend for getting started? Recommend for getting started? Well, I I will recommend Richard Hittleman's book okay. because uh, I, I believe his 30 day meditation courses or not meditation, 30 day yoga plan is still available. Okay. And I've seen it on Amazon. I bought I I bought a bunch of them just because I knew it might someday it might go out of print. So I, anyway, but uh, find that book. It's a great intro thing. Okay, it, it's very self explanatory, and you feel the results immediately. I mean, literally, I started it and and have barely missed a day since oh, forty five years ago. <laughs> okay. Richard Hillman. Uh, yes. you, you mentioned meditation even just in, in passing there too. So do, is that part of your regimen then? Do you, do Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And, and in fact, I, you know, I've been doing a meditation, uh, a virtual meditation class on Monday nights, usually Monday nights, sometimes yeah. it's the shift, but, um, but yeah, if anybody's interested in that, just go to, uh, hot for yoga, scv.com okay. and, um, or yoga at hot for yoga, scv.com. Okay. And, um, and, check out uh, the virtual meditation class. There's also other virtual classes. There's virtual yoga classes as well, which would be a good way to, to intro. So um, Zoom or something? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know what? When we hop off, I'll grab that link and I'll put that in the show notes afterwards. Oh, I think, great. I mean, great. honestly, for me, the pandemic was the first place that I learned to meditate. Yeah. You know, and well, that and that's when I that's when I started the uh, the online thing because it seemed like a good thing to do. And yeah, glad it did. Man, I, uh, I I see that Michael Regan's here in uh, in the chat. So Mike's been your your manager for a bit, is that right? So he's well, Michael me. handles all my social media stuff and okay. does a brilliant job of it. And I am eternally grateful to him because I would be clueless without yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you've got you know you juggle a lot of stuff, man. You're wearing a lot of hats. You... Well, and that's the thing, I. I, but I can't get a social media hat on for somebody who won't fit. <laughs> yeah, we're only twenty four hours in the day, man. And, yeah. and when you find somebody that's skilled in that, that's important. It's, it's been it's been so helpful because honestly, I I am the type I just don't think about it. I I kind of think music. That's yeah. kind of what I do. <laughs> yeah. Well, as an artist, you know, if you're a painter, yeah. the last thing you really want to be really having to focus on is like marketing your artwork, right? So it's the same kind of thing. Yeah, you know? I guess you're right. You're right. But your, but your heart, right. creativity. Um, and and I, yet that's that's the work ethic these days. You know, everybody does kind of have to fend for themselves a bit, which is which is an interesting dynamic. I, you know, I I do hope that soon there is a better atmosphere for artists, mm -hmm. a better infrastructure for them, especially on the business side. Yeah, because right now, you know, people I mean, people are getting creative and figuring out ways to sell things and make money or whatever. But. But as far as a mainstream conduit for great new music, nothing's out there yet. And it's, I mean, it's, it, there's little, little hints of it, but the, not, not the big breakthrough thing that has to happen. Yeah. And I really hope it does soon. You know, I, it's interesting when I'm out on the road, I always have people pitching those kinds of ideas, you know, so they'll say, you know, here's, you know, I've got this great idea for an app that's going to introduce independent artists at the same time. So independent artists, kind of like the, the Spotify sort of recommended thing. You know, so if you're listening to the new end machine record, it might actually funnel in some Lynch Pilsen stuff, or it might say, Hey, you oh, know, because Jeff Pilsen was involved in these bands, he's also in Foreigner. Here's a new, uh, you know, or here's the new revelation. Yeah, I, I you know, you. And so the, those kinds of ideas, you know, yeah. I, I love that independent musicians are getting at least opportunities on, yes. so, you know, you know, especially. Yes. I mean, streams don't equate to a lot of mortgage payments, right? They you don't. Know? They don't. They yeah. don't. But yeah. Well, um, you know, we, we're talking about those bands. Um, I know you got a new Revolution Saints record coming out. Another dear friend, Dean Castanovo, and I, another Northwest guy, man. I've known yeah. you for a long or, time. Or Salem. 
Yeah. yeah, Salem. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you guys get the whole I five corridor. You know, between where oh, you wow. were at and, and Dean, right? So everywhere from Longview to Salem. Dean yeah, that's right. Longview. You guys are huge in the Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, but Dino, um, you know, I heard an interview that you had done recently where you talked about Dean getting the recognition for his voice that he wasn't yeah. so much seeing people that go to Journey shows and they would see Arnell do the, the thing and then they see, oh wow, you know, sure. if they hadn't seen Dean, all of a sudden their mind gets blown. Right. But, but you've known Dean for a long time, I'm guessing, right? I have, and yeah. and and you know, I think uh, what I really mean by that is, I mean, people have known he's sang because he has been singing in Journey shows for a long time. But to hear him do new music yeah. with his own voice, it's it's just so awesome to hear. And the fact is, people are loving it as they should. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I I'm just so happy for him because he really deserves it. He's a he's just such a great artist and such a great singer, and you know, and a great guy. So. He's a great guy, and I'm I'm yeah. really proud to see, uh, you know, we talked about character before, yeah. you know, uh, you know, if you watched anything, you knew Dean went through a rough patch, man, and I sure. think for him to come on the other side and really yeah. want to yep. put forth positivity, education, yep. you know, to be able to yep. get past that stuff. I mean, you know, Jeff, we're in the music business, right? And so we're not yeah. all, you know, it, like it's very rare to be able to be put up on a pedestal and be able to showcase ethics morals and and perfect character all the time so for dean to kind of own his past and get these opportunities you know with revolution yeah. Saints, um yeah. and it's more of a focal point it seems like now with the new lineup you know i mean of course he had jack before uh but but bringing in um um uh, because he yeah it was it was jack and red before right no no it's jack and doug aldrich jack and doug aldrich now it's reb and you and, no, and now it's joel and me or Joel, Joel Hoekstra, that's right. Yeah. And then is, there was a drummer in the new video that I saw. Yeah, yeah, Kyle Hughes. Okay, is Kyle... He plays, with, he plays with Graham Bonnet. Yeah, if we play live, I'm sure we'd use Kyle. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Dean, Dean's going to get off the kit, and he's just going to be singing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if we ever did a show, I'm sure there'd be a point when Dean would play some drums. But yeah, um, but yeah he would he would sing, and, and we're excited about that. And, you know, uh, because the Frontiers thing is such a machine, right? I mean, I know that that was going to keep moving forward. And it sounded like when when um, Jack and Doug moved on, they just said, hey, man, we, we need to put a real solid band around you. And that the idea was to put you in that project. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I I mean, listen, those were tough shoes to fill. You know, Doug and Doug and Jack are great. So um, when I got the call, it was certainly a no brainer for me. And, you know. I mean, I think they were, yeah. I mean, because those were tough shoes to fill, they probably wanted to find somebody that had at least some kind of a name. So mm -hmm. there was that. And and I think they know that I'm a very um, enthusiastic member of any band I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that that helps too. <laughs> and, and the new record is being released this next week. Yeah. Right? This weekend, right? So you've got, you have a new Revolution Saints record coming out. There's the one single already that's out there, but it sounds like you guys did some other recording for this thing too, right? So, I mean, some, some videos recorded for the for new you, record. So for the new Revolution Saints? Yeah. yeah. We did five videos. Oh my God, man. This is yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, Frontiers is very behind Revolution Saints. It's cool. As they should be, right? I mean, yeah, like... Of course. You know, a lot of your, your compadres have actually been on the show, but I just had... Uh, Robin McCauley on about a month ago, right? So we were talking Black Swan as well. And, yeah. and uh, um, another Frontiers project too, right? So they, they kind of get behind guys yeah. that have made a name for themselves back sure. in, in the sure. era that you know, we all grew up in. Yeah. So is that- Plus I think they're genuinely excited to see what happens when we get together musically. You know, they, yeah. they, they're fans too. It would yeah. Cool. So they want to see, wow, what would- Red Beach sound like playing with Robin McCauley and, you know, that kind of thing, which I think is wonderful. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I guess I was thinking about the first, before Frontiers was even around when Damn Yankees came out, right? So you had Jack and Ted Nugent and, you know, so when you were doing that kind of project where it was quote unquote super group, that was, you know, when, when that was at least a, uh, a pet project, you know, and it worked, right? They had some hits come out. Oh and yeah. I, we, Great we, songs. <laughs> Huge songs. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's good really, song. really good songs. Yeah. High Enough is a really good song. <laughs> Man, yeah. You yeah. can. I mean, that's really a good song. So, it's, yeah. Tommy and Jack are no slouches. <laughs> no, that's true, man. And well, uh, so you talk about Tommy. You know, I've had a lot of friends that have been coming out to see the, the Sticks tour this last year. And a bunch of my friends that saw you last week at the residency in Vegas, right? Oh, so, cool. 
people are sending me pictures saying, man, like um, the approachable side of you for you just being able to go out there and recognize how important it was that the fans were there to support, you know, like uh, everybody that talked to you, I mean, I, I, I hope you don't mind, but I was on the phone with Steve Brown just before I could jump up oh. with you. Okay. And Steve's another one who just said, D- tell him, I love him. You know, there's, I, I, I tried to find dirt on you, buddy, and I can't do it, man. So yeah, I, um, but but I really do love that people revere you, you know? And so when oh, well, you're out there at these, I don't know about revere, but, but, but I, I do have a lot of friends and I yeah. think I have a lot of really nice relationships and it's very nice that people say those things. That's very kind. So you're at the foreigner shows and you're going out and you're talking to people after the gigs, you're walking around the casino and hanging. Not really. <laughs> I mean, I, I have to go to my room. So I yeah. guess on the way to the room I am, but yeah, I, I don't do a lot of hanging. Yeah, it shows as a rule, but you know, I, I'm not opposed to it. I just kind of don't do it. <laughs> well, people mentioned that you were approachable, and that you know you weren't like, "Ah, hey, man, I, I don't really want to take a picture." Okay, I, I mean, if somebody yeah. sees me on the elevator or something, of course I'll talk to them. Yeah. yeah, but you find it like yeah, because you're at a level. I talked about you being the Mount Rushmore of rock and roll bass players, you know, and and I've had some really fun guests on the show. Like I had Rudy Sarzo on the show, where we talked about the pedigree of performances, you know, that he'd had and also about the loss, you know, when I talked to him about, you know, losing Randy Rhodes, who was so sure. close to him and Kevin DeBrow and, yeah. um, you know, and Ronnie James Dio. I mean, like and you had done some work with Ronnie as well, right? Oh yeah. God, oh, man. Yeah. So, so with him, you know, I talked to him about how you maintain that connection to music, you know, the spirit and not sort of, um, you know, let your heart, be sort of shrouded, you know, in some of that, that grief, man. What do you do besides meditation? How do you sort of maintain your positivity with it? Well, I mean, in a case like Ronnie, Ronnie was just such a positive force. And I know, see, what, what makes me feel good about Ronnie is that I know his music is being preserved and yeah. that his legacy will live on through his music, which is all he ever would have wanted, really. I mean, he, you know, I mean, he, he loved his friends and he wanted everybody to do well but as far as his own music goes i think that's he just wanted to make sure it was out there and in the places it needed to be which i think it will i think it will have its place not only does he have his place in history but i think his music will continually recycle into new ages because Mm. it was brilliant and um and he's got the infrastructure around it that can make that happen so in ronnie's case that's how i kind of feel better about the fact that i miss him i mean i think about him practically every day. I mean, there's, there's hardly a day that goes by where, you know, cause my, my wife and I, my wife was real close too. And even our daughter was real. My, our daughter was there when he passed away, so, you know, oh, as, as was my wife. So, so, uh, I mean, it's, it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's like family. So to get past that, knowing that musically <clears throat> he, is going to be remembered the way he should be. That makes me feel a lot better. Yeah. Uh, I never knew Randy Rhodes. I knew Kevin DeBro and liked him a lot. You know, a lot of people used to talk shit about Kevin a right. lot. But he, he had an attitude I, for sure, right? He was never once anything but kind to me. He's He was always very sweet to me. Um, I hadn't seen him in years, but in, in the 80s, we did a lot of partying together (laughs) and again he was just nothing but sweet and wonderful the whole time so um for somebody like that you know i wasn't close enough to experience the kind of grief i experienced with ronnie yeah um but it you know it is a case of where it's kind of too bad you know that somebody you know took a substance that killed them you know that's a real sad thing so you know i think when, when that happens, I think you got to take stock and take notice, you know, am I in control of the things I'm doing? And am I taking care of myself the way I need to? Cause you know, I want to, you know, I want to walk down, walk my daughter down the aisle, you know, yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. you know, and, and so that, that kind of thing, got to take care of yourself. I mean, really, you know, Rudy kind of got into that. He talked about substances, right. And, sure. and, you know, when you talk about getting into this phase where health was a huge part of your life, yeah. uh, and you mentioned partying, you know, back in the day with your brow. Oh, yeah. So, um, it seems to me like there's no way on earth that you could maintain the partying, you know, that early eighties might've <laughs> had in you. 
to do what you're doing right now. You know, you seem to have a real solid head. In your yeah. I, well, you, I don't, yeah, I don't, I not, not the kind of party I was doing in the eighties. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, I, I, prefer music to getting high <laughs> you know? yeah. and and i sort of had to make a choice there but um um i just i yeah you're right i there's no way i could i mean i listen i don't want to be judgmental about no, judgmental no, no. about people who do party because yeah. i think everyone's got to decide for themselves what they do and what they can do and what they how much they do it and whatever and I, I, I really try to be never judgmental about it. I can only be judgmental about myself. <laughs> and I know I'm better off doing things the way I do them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and I don't see it as being judgmental at all. I think, you know, Randy's thing, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, Broody's thing was talking about that, that, you know, for him, uh, he'd worked really hard, right? He was a Cuban immigrant that came over the States. Yeah. He, he was yeah. so focused. When I talk to guys like that, that have the work ethic, you know, yeah. like that. Yeah. Like, okay. For when I was 17, 16, 17, my dad took me to go see Chick Corea play. And I was oh, this wow. rocker in Montana who all I knew was Scorpions and Metallic and all that, you know. And and I saw Chick Corea. Dave Weckl, I talked to him after the show. I, my mind was blown. And I said, wow. how did you do what you were just doing? John Patitucci was backstage, you know, and Weckl said, you party? And I thought he was asking me. I said, no, I don't, man. I'm a sober kid, you know. And he said, come back to the hotel. Come back to the lounge. We're going to talk. And my dad sat there while Weckl talked to me for over an hour about if you really want to do this for a living, if you want to do it for a career, there's no way you can party the way you do in your early 20s, man, because wow. you, you have to take it. That's like, cool. He, he actually <laughs> wrote me a letter that I kept because I, I remember that sticking with me, thinking yeah. all wow. I'm thinking about was Decline of the Western Civilization Part 2, watching, you know, like Chris, uh, Holmes, yeah. Chris Holmes and the you know, on the pool with a vodka bottle, the, yeah, yeah, all yeah. that stuff, you know, I mean, that was what was put out there as sort of right. a show for what rock and roll was. But, right. um, but you touched on this with, um, with Ronnie and his legacy, you know, when you said that you feel better about knowing that his legacy lives on because mm -hmm. of his contributions musically, but also that the integrity of his music was going to carry mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, I'm always interested to know about people's legacy. You know, what is it that Jeff Pilson wants when it's his time? What you like, wow. What you, you know, I would want, um, well, I mean, there's, there's, I have a fair amount of music that if it's unreleased by the time I go, I hope somebody takes the initiative to release it. Okay. Um, so there's that. Um, but I, I, I do plan on finishing before I, before I start, chewing on daisies um <laughs> but uh but i uh you know i mean i just i hope my songwriting improves and i hope you know my, my ultimate goal is to have a great song recognized somehow somewhere some you know that you know movie bad any whatever oh, yeah. um so hopefully that that would be great um but i'd love to have music that lives on and um if that could happen i would be ecstatic and other than that, I just want to be known as a great husband and, and father and wow. friend. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, well, it's at least on, you know, to the end of the friendship part, a lot of people really do just talk about, you know, the, the relationship they have with you, which is, uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. I think. Well, that's, that's, that's cool. I mean, I, I value my friendships a lot yeah. in life and I value, um, the feeling that happens as a result of all that, you know, there's, yeah. there's, there's a better atmosphere in your life when that's going on. So I value that. And, but those people are all a very much a part of it. You know yeah. I mean? You know, Robin McCauley is such a character, is yeah. such a wonderful, big spirited guy, but with the heart of gold. And, you know, I mean, having a guy like that in my life as a friend is, and I get to work with him, but, but he's a friend too. I mean, come on. It don't get better than that. Yeah, well, you know, you're right. And like, I, I talked to a lot of musicians on this show about, because somebody that's, you know, an up and coming musician, I've got a, you know, a, a 21 or 24 year old son who's, you know, an avid drummer, wicked drummer, but he's also a hip hop artist, but he's more of a solo guy, right? He's doing stuff on his own. And I said, if you want to make it in the music business, you got to work on relationships. It's all about the hand. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. can be an incredible chops guy, but if right. you can't get along with people, then, you know, there's yeah. no way you're going to be able to stay on the road, you know? And so the fact that you talk about having the relationship that, you know, that carries on because 
man, if you're on a bus with somebody 24 hours a day, yeah. you know, and uh, the way oh, that, yeah. that women foreigner for 20 years now, you guys have been doing all these shows, um, a lot of festivals and a lot of like, you know, it, it seems like you were doing a good handful of uh, not necessarily residencies, but one offs and, and, and placement shows. But were you guys actually doing like four or five nights a week on tour for a while too? Foreigner? Oh, yeah. God. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we've been going pretty hard and heavy since 2005. Wow. Uh, you know, over a hundred shows every year. There was a period there where we got to as many as 140. So, wow. But yeah, we, we, we've been cooking this whole time. I, I do <laughs> That's remember. why a farewell tour is kind of in order. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, yeah. So we'll let's talk, we'll talk about that. It, like I, I did catch you the first time that I got to see you play in the band. And I've been a huge, you know, Kelly Hansen fan forever, man. Back in the hurricane days was ridiculous. Seeing him at, uh, you know, in Vegas doing the, the rock vault stuff was super cool. Uh, he nails the, the foreigner thing. It's, yes, he does. it's uncanny how much, you know, it's almost like Lou said, Hey, by the way, you know, I'm channeling part of my soul to you so that you can do this thing. Um, yeah. And I do yeah. see you guys, uh, Night Ranger and Journey, actually back, you know, here in Portland, you know, many years ago. And, uh, yeah, is it right? No, it was, yeah. What? Oh, you had Shulman on drums. That's, that's right. right. That was 2011. That's right. Yeah, man. I'm, Journey, so, Journey and Night Ranger. Yeah. If you were still partying, there's no way you would have remembered that date, right? So, yeah. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. But but all the way across the board, I mean, all like three drummers are buddies of mine, which is super cool. And that, that's and that right. Cool, you know, so um, before we talk about um, some of the these other projects and the foreigner stuff and the end of foreigner as it's known to be with this tour um i see that a couple people here are chatting they want to know about some doc and stuff uh okay. dizzy busy in the chat wants to know uh what are your two favorite deep cuts by Dawkin? deep cuts yeah uh one would be lightning strikes i don't know if that i i think that's considered a deep cut lightning strikes again and the other one would be uh will the sunrise Definitely. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, love that song. Huge hook, man. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. I just yeah, and it, it was very magical song the way the whole thing came together. Beautiful. When, when that's written, I mean, do you and George like was that primarily like you and George writing those songs, or was it Don contributing? It was. It was well on on that record. I mean, George and I did a lot of the music, um, and some of the lyric and melody songs. You know, it's not love. Yeah. Unchain the night. We George and I did those, uh, but then we Don was in on a, a bunch of them too. And then Don wrote some music. Don wrote a lot of the music to In My Dreams. Really? He okay. and I wrote the music together on that one. Right. Um, and what else did he write some music on? Um, well, uh, well, I actually know George wrote most of the music to Breaking the Chains. But um, anyways, but Don's done plenty where he's done the music too. Yeah. Okay. That, I mean, it's kind of a a mishmash. That's the yeah. Point. There is no one thing which kind of gave us i think an advantage yeah well yeah i mean some bands you know you know this for sure you know you might have one person in the band that's such the primary songwriter that it sort of overshadows everybody in terms of camaraderie you know if it's like right right you know, but i uh and skip stone here in chat too this is really interesting he says are you open up playing other genres other than rock like say oh, taking songs from Doctor and then putting them in a country or jazz setting. Absolutely, I love doing stuff. Like that. And and yeah. you know, George and I have done a slight bit of that with our heavy hitters project. Although that's kind of become rock now, so yeah. it's sort of not doesn't apply anymore. But um, I love doing that. Yeah, uh, I absolutely love doing that. And yeah, that's something I. I mean, I do that for fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like campfire stuff. You just pull down a guitar and and. and just, yeah, every, everyone's. I've been known to just decide to record a song in a weird way and just do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, it, um, I, I'm curious to know. Like, I, I was at an incredible show last night here in Portland. I, I I live in New Mexico now. I came back up here because my son got me Christmas get, tickets to go see Muse last night. Oh wow, that wow. show floored me, yeah. man. I mean, I've seen it before. Yeah. Visually, that production on that show was one of the yeah. most insane things I've ever seen. I still feel like I kind of got epilepsy, you know, because yeah, so much. No, my, my my daughter is a huge fan, and she just went and saw them in LA recently. She said it was mind boggling, unbelievable. And okay, so you'll appreciate this. Evanescence opened the forum, right? Yes, yes. Evanescence, the production on that show in the opening act was as big as Muse. They had full PA. Wow. They had all the lights. Right. I mean, you and I both know, right? If you're not yeah. heading the gig, a lot of those fans don't get the opportunity. Right. 
Well, that's cool that they did that. That's very yeah, cool. It was super cool. Is there anybody that is out now like that, that you get a chance when you've got a time off, do you actually go out and see shows? Very rarely. Yeah. I mean, just going to, going to a live show does not appeal when you're on the road. Most of the year. Um, um, but I, having said that, I, I, I have seen rival sons a couple of times and I absolutely oh, yeah. think they're frigging phenomenal. Love, love, love that band. I would like to see dirty honey. I like them. My, Oh yeah, them. and I would love to go see the a Muse show. I would absolutely. I mean, I loved Muse since they came out. Really, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I I love the band. I mean, they're. I'm not as hip on their newer records, but I still, I know how great they are. You can hear influences. You know the stuff sure. that you and I grew up in. I I hear a sure. huge Queen influence in that oh, yeah. band. You know, and uh, it's just cool that newer yeah. kids sort of discover that and think, oh, this is this new modern thing. But right. there's you know, they definitely yeah. have those influences. And yes, and that's wonderful. I um is there a band out there that because you talked about Randy Hansen not having the recognition mm -hmm. that he should. Are there bands out there that you think, oh, you know what, man, this band is so underground and they deserve to have the entire world know about them? Anybody well, I mean, that that is kind of my feeling about Rival Sons. I mean, yeah. not that they're underground and a lot of people do know about them, but I mean, to me, they are just they should be the biggest band in the world right now. <laughs> you know, I just, I think yeah. so that singer is so great. I love the guitar player's approach. I love the way the band plays and just everything about the records. I love all that. So, um, so I, my, the answer to that question is I think they should be way bigger than they are. I love it. No, that's good. You know, Skip that just asked a question. He said, he recommends Starcrawler. That's a band that he says everybody mm -hmm. should know about. They'll be Florida. Okay. You know, for me, you know, cause I, you know, this man, you'll have, when you're on the road, People are giving you stuff all the time, but you know, hey man, I got my band over in uh, Mesa. You know, here's here's our demo. You know, maybe we can open for you on these shows. And yeah. that stuff, whether you like it or not, that stuff just never sees the light of day because there's no. T First of right. all, nobody's got a CD player. You know, anywhere on a bus yeah. or on the band. Right. And uh, yeah, and it's not that you're not interested, but w when somebody like hits my you, laptop, doesn't even have a CD. Player. Right. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> you give me a streaming card. It's not yeah. happening. Right. So uh, yeah. It's, uh, I, you, um, I was curious about the Revolution Saints stuff because you got the new record coming out this week. Mm -hmm. Foreigner has this tour that's wrapping up. This is the end of the road, the final run for Foreigner in starting. It's the Black. beginning of the end. But yeah. <laughs> it's, well, it's, this it's is go for a while, but... Kiss, right? Where you started a fourteen-year. It's, it's not going to be Kiss, but okay. we are definitely going to go well into twenty-four at least. Okay, yeah. so yeah, starting in July, this is the the end of the road for Foreigner. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. and you've already mapped out, you've got like, uh, you like American dates or you're doing Europe as well, right? Not so far. Oh, I, really? mean, I, I think that's on, that's in the plans, but, yeah. uh, no, not so far at 23 is all America. So, okay. so it's just a, just a U.S. thing with lover boy starting in July in oh, Georgia. Geez. And we are excited and it's going to be great. God, man, that, yeah. it's another band too. You know, we, we do a lot of shows with lover boy and, yeah. I'm still floored, man, that Reno can do what he does. You know, yeah. wow. he sounds amazing. <laughs> He's he really got does. It, pe people the whole are always, band is the band sounds like Loverboy. Every, totally. I mean, they're absolutely yep. wonderful every night. I it, it, well, without fail. And and that you know, a lot of people that I know that have seen Loverboy because Mike has that technique with his mic, right, where he'll he'll sing and he'll pull the mic off yeah, because yeah. the voice is so loud, so right. strong that he's controlling it. People are like, yeah. oh, he's lip syncing. There's nothing tracked with that band, just no. like you guys, right? I mean, you guys are doing no. everything live, right? Harmonies. Everything is live. Everything is 100% live. Yes. And yeah. That's, yeah. That. That's. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Don't get me started. <laughs> well, no, but, you know, and so I thought about that. You know, last night I was watching. You know, some of this stuff. You know, um, Evanescence. They had some supplemental stuff. You know, Amy's singing live. The girl from Evanescence got this crazy operatic pipes. No, she's and wonderful. Pipes. She really is. And the band is smoking, right? Every, yeah. You know, everybody and that see, on a band like that with a, it's a modern, you know, their take on rock, they kind of need that. I mean, I wouldn't say need because they're a great band without it, but, yeah. but it's part of the presentation of their music. So yeah. I don't have a problem with that. Right. And with Muse, there's only three guys. So how in the hell are they going to do it all? Without yeah. Them? Yeah. Um, no. So I, I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem with bands like ours, which are organic rock bands. Yeah. I want to see an organic rock band be yeah. a real organic rock band. Yeah. That's what I, that's my feeling. Right. And you, there's a lot of rock bands that aren't as organic as they used to be. 
Yeah. Isn't, yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, I see both sides of some of that because I know that as we get older, vocally, yeah. I'm a drummer. Oh, yeah. So I, I can keep my physical muscles up. I know that guys that can't, they don't have the pipes. They don't have the yeah. Mickey Thomas pipes anymore. Or, you know, we're at 73 that can still hit those notes. Yes. But, but um, I love when guys will go, okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to sing to a reference note in my ears. So at least I can still, my pitch will go there, even if my voice is kind of failing me, so that they get some help there, but they're still yeah. giving the performance. To me, yeah. I love seeing that, man, because that's not yeah. male. And they're trying to give back to the fans. What yeah, as long, as long as you're giving your all. I mean, listen, music should be about emotion and passion. Yeah. You know, so as long as you're doing that, whatever it takes is cool. Um, I just think that the most passion is likely to come out of a, a rocking real live band who's yeah. kicking ass, singing and singing emotionally and powerfully. Come on. What's better? Yeah, totally. What's, uh, what's the last time you had goosebumps on stage, man? On stage, yeah. um, you know that long talking about where everything washed yeah, um, over. The- I want to say during the Vegas run, there was a, there was a couple of times of I want to know what love is where woo, you know you can yeah. feel the audience getting into it. Mm. Yeah, but but I I feel like there's more than that. I just you know I'm not I wasn't taking notes or anything. <laughs> that's a that's a rare thing. I mean, the the wash, yeah. you know, that part. Is I yeah. chase that all the time, you know. Yeah. It, it rarely happens, man, and I want it more. It's like you know, kind of the the elusive orgasm thing, right? Where you, <laughs> unless yeah. somebody's never been on stage, they don't get it. And um, yeah. I can totally picture that, man, where you've got the big mm-hmm. chorus at the end, everybody in the whole auditorium is singing along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, Pretty cool. When you uh, when you were younger, and you were out, you know, the 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 young Jeff Pilson as a teenager. Uh, what were bands that you saw that were like that, that just gave you the drive to want to do this? Well, let's see. I mean, I, the first thing I ever saw was the beach boys when I was 12. Okay. That blew me away. Cause, cause you know, I could, I mean, as a 12 year old kid, I could carry a tune. I could sing, you know? Um, And that was just when I started playing is when I was 12. So, so, so I was kind of aware and they were great. They were really still, they were, they were really a, a great live band at that point. That was that was in May of 1970. Uh, oh, then I saw a Zeppelin in 72. Oh, God. And okay. that, that was huge. Yeah. That was a huge, huge thing. They, they were touring the fourth record. Oh, so my God. Heaven wasn't even all that known yet. I mean, it was pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Where did you see that just, show? What's that? Where did you see that show? At the Portland Memorial Coliseum. Wow. Okay. Do you remember who opened? There was no opening act. Oh, who needs it an was, opening? Yeah. It was. It was. There was rumors that it was humble pie. Oh, okay. Um, but when we got there, um, I actually recorded that. I bootlegged that show. I recorded that show. Unfortunately, years later, it got stolen from me. But, oh, no. but it actually, it actually came out amazing. It was really cool. Anyways, but at the beginning of the of the recording, you could hear because Zeppelin walk out and you know Bonham's like hitting the drums and Page hitting the guitar. I I thought it was humble pie. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, and you could hear my little fourteen-year-old voice going, "That's Led Zeppelin." (laughs) (laughs) Man, were you were you playing guitar or bass then? I played bass. Yeah, so you started as a bassist. I started as a bass player. Yeah, I started because some guys came up to me on the in a uh, on the playground in the schoolyard in sixth grade, and they'd heard me singing this beer commercial. And they said, hey, we're starting a band. Do you want to be the singer? And I said, sure. And then they said, we don't have a bass player. You want to play bass? I said, sure. How so many strings does it have? <laughs> yeah, I bought a, I bought a bass. I, I had a paper out at the time, so I bought a bass and an amp. And that band never happened, but I started playing bass. <laughs> oh, man. you at, at that point, did you just get totally locked into just watching bassists? Like, were you watching John Paul Jones and going, okay. Oh, That's- by the time I saw Zeppelin, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I watched the whole show, really. Um, I mean, John Paul Jones wasn't the most exciting thing about the band sure. to watch, yeah. but 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 um, and in fact, I will say, in all honesty, I didn't appreciate him back then like I do now. Most people don't, right? Yeah, I mean, because at the time, his sound was very round, and and like in the Portland Coliseum, you Ugh. couldn't really hear what he was playing. Yeah. Um, I became a huge Chris Squire fan and a oh. huge Yes fan. So that was the kind of bass player I was drawn to. And that's then that's when my playing really evolved because I, I yeah. studied Yes. Yeah. So were you a prog guy? Really? Oh, big, big prog guy. Okay. Early, early prog guy. Yeah. That, um, it's interesting, you know, to hear 
how the bands that you're most known for are, you know, somewhat of a, you know, they're, they're not necessarily prog. I mean, they're, they're progressive metal. metal stuff. Right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. this is, this is sort of an aside. I see in the chat here, Robert Anthony Robinson, he echoed what somebody else was asking me about this, uh, this purported member of Dokken, uh, Dan Crenshaw. Um, he said, does, does, does uh, Jeff know Dan Crenshaw? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who, who is he? Yeah, exactly. Um, he's a guy from Longview who who's claimed to be in, in, in Dokken forever. And, uh, you know, every time I see him, he'll tell me about other bands. That would be a big coincidence. <laughs> Two guys from Longview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so Dan, um, yeah, the last time I saw him, he told me he was in Lita Ford's band, too. And I said, interesting, because I know all those guys, too, in that band. Yeah. But, you know, uh, when you're from Longview. The shadow member. That's, yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, um <laughs> There's a lot of laughter going on in the chat right now. I appreciate okay. it. Um, but uh, and somebody actually said, more, more Coliseum. Oh, Skip said, Coliseum is actually where he first saw Dokken. So, oh, wow. How funny. When, when you first started that band off, I mean, I, you know, I knew a lot about those early records, but I didn't really know about the formation of the band. So you were already playing around doing all these gigs. But how did, how did that band start out? Was it, was it, uh, well, you- Jordan. Okay, so Dawkins started off. Don had a band called Airborne in LA. Okay, and he ended up moving to Germany. I want to say late seventies at some point, just because LA had gotten into the whole skinny tie, the knack, new wave kind of stuff, and he figured, hey, might as well go to Europe. You know, metal's got to be cool there. Yeah, and he was smart. You know, Don is a smart guy, and yeah. and he went and did that, and he ended up meeting Dieter Dirks, who um, Scorpions. Yeah, and so Don started doing demos, and I think they got rid of the name Airborne quick. Uh, I th- I think they went to Dokken fairly soon, and I know on the early demos, Bobby Blotzer's playing drums, and I believe Tom Carusier, Juan's brother, is playing bass on the early wow. demos. Interesting. Uh, but anyways, long story short, um, Don uh, got a deal, but he needed to get a drummer because Bobby couldn't do it. Bobby was going to be in rap. Right. So... Um, so he and he knew Mick Brown from Exciter, you know, playing around LA. Oh, yeah. So he called up Mick Brown to see if he wanted to be in Dockin because he knew Exciter was, you know, because of the whole new wave, wave thing, Exciter wasn't really doing much at that point. Right. So um, Mick said, Yeah, I'll do it, but you got to take George too. And Don knew George, of course, because, you know, they played plenty of shows together because, and he knew George was great. Yeah. So he thought, hmm. This might be a good idea. So he, he did. He knew he didn't really know. I mean, I, I think he had a I'm not sure if they had a vibe that they weren't going to get along much or whatever. But somehow there was kind of a bit of an idea of that. But uh, but anyways, but that's how George and Mick ended up joining Don. OK. And Juan was in the band, I guess, because he had. I'm not really exactly sure, but, but at that point, Juan was in the band. And then Juan left to join Rat, and that's when I joined. So okay. and that, was, that was in uh, August of 83. And you were already living in L.A. You were deep in the I city. moved to L.A. in, yeah, like in March. Okay. Yeah. And when you moved down there, did you move down with a band, or were you moving on your own? No, I moved with a girlfriend, but but I, um, I ended up, I did try out for a top 40 band before we moved, and I got the gig, so okay. I came down, and at least I had some work. Yeah. So that's, that's what I did for a while. And then I started a, um, then we had a, um, a top 40 band with Paul Taylor from winger, oh my uh, God. Mark Nelson, who went on to do a lot of things, but has, you know, since been a huge executive in the music business uh, industry and, you know, at like, you know, Pearl drums and, Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Roland, all this other stuff. Anyways, uh, uh, damn. Uh, Oh my God. Um, Yeah. Oh, and Amy Cannon was the singer. That's what I'm trying okay. to think of. A- Amy Cannon was one of the nasty habits. Amy has oh, wow. since passed away, but she was one of the nasty habits with Motley Crue. So anyways, but that was a great top 40 band. And that was the band I was in when Dawkins came to see me. Okay. And they, they were looking for bassist when Juan was heading on. And they said, right. Oh, all right. That, they came to the top 40 gig. That well, was no, the- no. Well, that was after. But, but the connection was made through Mike Varney. Gotcha. Okay. Don Dockin had called Mike Varney and said, do you know of any singing bass players? And I had just moved to LA. So Mike mm-hmm. and Mike and I know each other very well. So um, he brought up my name. Don called me up and I told him about the gig so they could actually, I, I met with Don first and that was a good meeting. And then they came to the gig and 
then we jammed and then I joined the band. Man, that you know, the Mike Varney connection, that's again, there's yeah. Fred Hansen. And Absolutely. He, and Dean Casanova, right? You got yeah. all these, yeah, Wild Dogs, right? You had, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, man, that, yeah. I, um, I, I, I'm always curious to know about that era. So you moved down there, you had your girlfriend, you had your cover gig, your top 40 gig that put together. Yep. Were you working a day gig then? No, no, I was able to make it with, uh, with the top, uh, 40. The top 40 gig. Yeah. yeah. What, what was the last day job you had? Drilling concrete at a muse at a, at a furniture store. Oh man. In 1978. So I thank God I have not had to do any of that. Since. Really? Yeah, man. That's 30 years. Like, yeah. 45 years. Yeah. Here's, I'll raise a glass to that. That's impressive, man. Me that, too. I'm having my non-alcoholic wine. <laughs> it's uh, my, my, my dad water here. So yeah. Okay. I, 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 um, yeah, man, I think, you know, there are so many parallels. When you started talking about some of these other musicians too, um, I was just down with uh, Kelly Kiki, right? So he's just prepping his new record and uh, in um, Phoenix. And he was doing a lot of virtual stuff. So he's got different players playing and everything is actually just, you know, everything's, the, all the tracks are being sent in. When you just put together the Revolution Saints stuff, didn't you guys, you guys did the same thing, right? Nobody was in the same room. You guys are Correct. doing virtuals. Correct. All right. And had you worked with Kelly at all? Kiki? Yeah. No, but I've known him forever. <laughs> but no, I've never actually worked with him now that you okay. mention it. Man. I'd love to because I, I love his voice. Incredible. Love. Yeah. Love and I, actually, I'm a big fan of his drumming, too, because he's just got a feel and a... He does, man. A thing. He's got a yeah. thing. Very cool. Very, he's an unorthodox player. Incredible voice. He and is. The fact that you've got, you know, you and the cat, you've got Casanova and, uh, and, you know, Kelly... I, I jokingly posted clips of me singing old like honeymoon suite songs online and said, never give the drummer a mic. But then I thought, Oh wait, there is Dean and there's Kelly. Kelly oh, Kiki. I yeah. take it back. Yeah. And then that's Don all. Henley's not too bad either. Nah, and Phil Collins was all right too. Right. Yeah. So, but, um, you know, speaking of like wicked drummers and guys that you played with Steve Brown, he's doing the end machine with you. He said that he's supposed to be doing some tracks in uh, June with you. For- yes. Yeah, are you guys doing it those virtual? Or are you going to be? Uh, no, no, he'll he, he's going to do them in this very room. Okay. Right? Oh, you, yeah, you got drum room back there. I have. Okay, wait. Can you see? Let me. Yeah, let's check it out. Okay, so see the glass. I do. Yeah. Okay. The, but back in there is the drum room. Okay. This and, is a uh, place, man. This is a gorgeous studio. Thank you. Yes. And are those purple baffles? Purple baffles. They, they are. They oh, are, yes. Buddy, they, are. they are indeed. I love it, man. That's <laughs> good stuff, man. You got a purple martial head back there, too. So, so what is that studio behind you? This is a virtual studio itself. That's, this is, that's a green screen, baby. Yeah. That's what I thought. As I, I thought it might be, but it it looks cool. What is it? Yeah, no, um, there's a there's a in so one of the guys that's been chatting here. I'm gonna I'm gonna change rooms though. This is a show we just did in Phoenix. This is a oh, better, cool. better venue that we just played. Um, I saw that uh, the Loyal Order was chatting here. Uh, Rob Dacre is a producer for the Loyal Order. Um, he plays with the Dan Reed Network, if you know that band. from. I know who Dan Reed is. I mean, yeah, Portland, yeah. come on. Yeah, I'm out of Portland, exactly. Yeah, so Rob um, is now playing with Dan Reed Network. And huh. uh, he's like the utility guy playing guitar and, and, and keyboards and stuff like that. He produced this record. That was a picture from his studio that I just ah, cool. pulled off. But cool. – um, but yeah, uh, yeah, somebody's talking honeymoon sweet. We, um, you know, I'm you mentioned before that you're not a big fan of like catching bands on the road. I gotta tell you, Jeff, I got hooked on a band that has been around for 25 years. I knew them then, but I was up in Toronto, we had a little day off, and I caught this band. Are you hip to Big Wreck? I know the name, okay, but the, Ian Thornley is the singer and the guitarist. He's a guy that I think everybody on the planet should know about. My kids okay. are sick of hearing about it. And my bandmates are all like, okay, enough. You know, let's talk about our band now because I, I can't wait to have another day off. I'm going to fly out to Buffalo, New York and go see them again because it blew my mind. I felt like a 14 year old kid watching. Nice. Them. So yeah, man, as a, as an appreciator of fantastic music, I think you should see and listen to big rack. Wow. Um, okay, man. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, then, uh, the next time you're out with uh, Revolution Saints, it's a perfect pairing, you know. Wait, <laughs> you guys aren't doing any touring though, right? That's it's mostly none, none planned at this point. I mean, we we'd love to figure it out, but 
as every I think people are starting to realize the logistics for getting these super bands to go play yeah. is very, very difficult. They've all got it a gig. We'll man. see. You know, I mean, maybe down somewhere down in the future. I mean, you know, hopefully after you know Foreigner is done, I will have more time to do more of that with other bands, but we'll have to see. That is the timing thing. So if you go through 24 yeah. with Foreigner, mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you got plenty of legs left in you, you know. So What's a dream gig for you? What, you know, if somebody else, if, you know, a Lou Graham type calls you, you know, comes along, there's another band that needs a Jeff Pilsen in the band. Who, who do you um, want well, I mean, at, you know, at that point, I mean, I would probably want to take one of these projects, you know, because I mean, those are all, all the projects I do. All three of them are my dream band. <laughs> you yeah, know, I mean, yeah, right. I, I, I mean, I just love working with George. You know, we have this chemistry that is so real and it's so enduring and it's, we both trust it and that's a that's a rare place to be you know where yeah. you can just kind of trust that the right thing's going to happen um you know and, and we love each other's people too you know this, there's just such a there's a depth in there and and i think after a while that comes out in the music too and yeah. and that makes for deeper music um so so for me you know i mean obviously and with m machine we the, the new singer that we have i mean i was I was so happy with Robert and I loved Robert how yeah. Robert did this whole thing. But for whatever reason, we have a new, a new singer, okay. but he happens to be incredible. Absolutely. And he's incredible. from India, right? His name is Garish Pradhan. Garish yeah, and he's, Pradhan. Yeah. And you'll, you'll see his name in some other projects too. The guy is phenomenal. Great writer. Um, I mean, and Steve Brown on drums. So if yeah. I had to tour with that band, with that, that would yeah. be kind of a dream band. God. Then you got Black Swan. Yeah, Fred Beach, Robin McCauley, Matt Starr. Oh, Matt's playing drums on that guy. I didn't realize. Matt okay. Starr plays drums, and Matt Starr is a hell of a singer as well. So, yeah. I, mean, I mean, and Reb's a hell of a singer. I mean, oh, that man. band vocally would be just scary. Well, and then you know, then Revolution Saints, God. You know, Dean and Joel, you know? right? Yeah. So, so, I mean, I'm getting myself excited here. <laughs> you have no slouches so, in any of those. I have plenty of dream gigs out there if, if the opportunities arise. Man, you know, um, I think knowing that, it's it's interesting. You mentioned Reb, too. What I was going to say about George is that I've never met George either. People that I've talked to that know him, like the Battens of the world, he sounds like such a decent human being. Oh, you know, sure. I really, I it really, I mean, it, it just seems like salt of the earth really does care mm -hmm. about, you know, <laughs> people uh and it's so important right so um yeah. i i have met reb a couple of times and i saw the same thing in him yeah you know, we did some stuff down in uh such a character well the dominican republic well he was actually diffusing some stuff that was going on from his singer at the time he was oh, the wow. peacemaker and i was like i really like this guy man oh, you know because wow. i'm such a huge fan of his playing but i liked that he was um you know he was very level-headed and he was actually yeah. just you know wow. It's good to hear. I yeah, I, yeah. I dearly love Reb. Yeah, man. Well, and and actually, unique individual. <laughs> and and Kelly mentioned the same thing. Kelly Kiki had mentioned, you know, he worked Reb worked yeah. on his stuff Reb a lot. Was at Night Ranger at one and, and actually does his solo stuff right now. Kelly's got a yeah. new record coming out. Oh, too. cool, cool, cool. But um, when you uh, you know, when you think about the characters that you've had, like George, right, where they're as much brothers as they are musicians, you know? So maybe, maybe give me a, a list of some of those guys that you've worked in the past where, you know, if, uh, you know, you, you know, like if you're, if your current relationship weren't there, Jeff is remarrying your wife right now and you've got groomsmen. Yeah. Give me your, uh, give me your musical groomsmen to, to assist you on your, your journey. My musical groomsmen. Wow. Yeah. I just that, made that up. That was silly, but yeah. Um, well, because, yeah, I would have different people as groomsmen than I would as new players in a band. Yeah, yeah. Asking for what would be my ideal band. Yeah, who are well, I'm thinking about your musical brethren, man. I mean somebody that just, you know, if today you needed to to lean on someone, you oh, know, it'd be George. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That that let um do you feel like he's got the recognition as a songwriter? Because I know as a guitarist, every guitarist on the planet can talk about how much he influenced them. Right. But in terms of like songwriting, do you feel like he gets the credit that he deserves? Probably not what he deserves um, because people probably do think that, you know, the guitarist is you know, more the guitar and whatever. Um, not as much the songwriting. But uh, but at the same time, I think, I think in 
in totality, I think people kind of realize that he's the writer and or that he's a stronger writer. I think he gets pretty good recognition for it. I guess he could always use more. Yeah. Well, like, you know, I think about guys like Nuno, right? So, right. you know, the newest Extreme track just came out and it's just the most ridiculous blistering solo out there. I don't know if you've heard it, but, mm. but it went viral because Nuno kind of set it up saying, hey, you know, it's been a long time coming, you know, what's 12 years between us or something was the last time we put out a record. And every guitarist I know now is freaking out because they said they'd never heard a solo like this before. Wow. But Nuno's got a pretty decent side gig, right, with Rihanna. He's out there playing right. roles. And, and so, you know, I think at some point somebody recognized that this guy, you know, had something to be able to contribute that went beyond just shreddery, right? And so I'm thinking yeah. from what I've seen. He's a pretty from, deep musician from what I understand, too. You know, yeah, plays everything, right? And and, and and just has a lot more knowledge than just, you know, bonehead rock. Right, know? yeah. Us bonehead rockers, man. Yeah. Speaking of boneheadedness, man, I always like to ask people, what's something, if they think they know Jeff Pilsen, whether it's a guilty pleasure or we go through your – you know, your your iPhone playlist or whatever, what's something that people would be surprised to find out about Pilsen? Hmm. That I love bird watching. Really? <laughs> You're a birder. Not, not like read books kind of thing, but yeah. I love, the, uh, excuse me, I don't know what I just swallowed, but. No. <laughs> it's a bird. Anyway, ever since the pandemic, I love going in my backyard and just, watching you know we, we have an acre so oh, you know nice. and just watching these birds and different birds and i for some reason it's this new old man passion of mine that yeah. i love no, <laughs> you know i mean there is something you mentioned the pandemic that is something too i, I told you that's where i discovered meditation being a real important mm -hmm. part of my life. sure and uh i was going out every day with my dog to find woods water like you know so i moved to santa fe new mexico like six mm -hmm. months ago and I've got to, I walk out my door into the woods and hmm. if I don't get that time, I'm, hmm. you know, that's like my, my Your centering process. It is. There's, I, I call it yeah. my 60 seconds of serenity is what I want. Great. I just that's want awesome. that. If I can get 60 seconds a day, man, it's a total reason. There you go. There so you bird go. watching. I like the bird watching thing. The other yeah. Thing, it's, 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 I, I would never have guessed. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I, uh, I had Johnny Jewelli on the show the other day, a huge ah. Johnny fan, right? And yeah. love that guy's voice. And he yeah. was, his guilty. Yeah, speaking of characters. Yeah, he is, man. But, you know, he's another dude, too. So driven. And you yeah. talk about, you know, not, not being like the master of your social stuff. That dude is the most heavily socially networked guy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. He's, he's out there getting crazy. video games happening. And he's got, you know, a, he's got a Discord yeah. channel where he's got 10-year-olds that follow him. But... Somebody brought up that he's uh, a boy band fan, and he sang some Backstreet Boys for me. And I was, all right, you win, man. That was that was good there stuff. You go. The other thing I do on the show is uh, I pull open fortune cookies for my guests, and okay. you, ne you never know, man. This is it, this this uh, this may or may not resonate with you, but we're gonna find out what uh, Jeff Pilson's fortune is. Okay. All right. If, if it says anything about. Uh, you know, that foreigner must continue on, then we'll see. <laughs> Don't let you oh, see. Well, okay, this is a little, a little contrived. You shall attain great wisdom with each passing year, Jeff. So one would hope that we all will, right? But I if, think it worked. It worked. If I'm you 65 had, years wiser. Are you 65 right now? I am. That's beautiful, man. 65, yeah. you, you do yoga every day? Every day. Yeah. Every day, and you got your meditation regimen down. What well, it's never down, but <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Well, but it's it's established. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I um, I'm I I think um, what I would love to do, man, when we hop off, do please get me the link to your recommended yoga instructor because I think uh, okay, a lot of us old guys, man, we're out there touring. I need to, I need, I really need that in my life, you know. Um, Great. And so, Richard Hittleman. Richard Hillman. There we go, folks. And uh, the uh, and then the, yoga at hotforyogascv.com. Okay. And you'll Beautiful. find virtual classes that will help. Nice, man. So, yeah, so you do the same. As I'm pointing my finger. Yeah, that's right. Well, <laughs> those of you in the chat that missed that, yeah, you point the finger at you. Um, <laughs> so we've got 
we have got brand new Revolution Saints coming out on the 21st this week. Uh, so guys, go out there, pre-register, get those streams ready, and then uh, buy it. What do you think of vinyl? Somebody had asked about vinyl before. Are you guys going to be doing I, I, I During the pandemic, I got into vinyl. So yeah? I, I love vinyl. I've got a really nice turntable and a nice system, so I love my vinyl. What was the last record you bought? Aqualung. Oh, okay. The oh. Stephen Wilson remix is phenomenal. Oh, yes. Vinyl. Phenomenal. So he's another one, man. And one of just before the pandemic, mm -hmm. one of the last shows I saw was a Stephen Wilson show. Mm -hmm. That's and a show I'd go to. It blew my mind. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I hear from everybody. Wow, man. Yeah. The uh interesting thing was that he, you know, he 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 spent the first few minutes railing his fans, saying, you know, put your phone away. Uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to be distracted by your, you know, your phones. I don't want you being distracted. I just want you to shut up and watch the show. And I thought, okay, well, you know, you know, your friends, man. That you was, know your audience. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, awesome, but yeah, man. He, he took all the biggest of those epic uh, prog records and just did masterpieces. Yeah. He, so. yeah, yeah, he did. And, and I love, I love, I love Porcupine Tree. It's great. Oh yes, man. Blackest Eyes. First time I heard that. Gavin Harrison, dude, that drummer. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 So, um, hey so man, I, this has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you for this. A great I, interview. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you, brother. I, I, you know what? I'm blown away that we didn't already meet each other somewhere down the yeah. road, you know, and you're probably not coming out to see any of the flock of seagulls shows that are coming out, but I would love to have you at a show if you want to come and, and see one, you know, that's so, who you play with. Yeah. That's my gig. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's All awesome. those skinny, so skinny tie bands that were, uh, we're sending down yeah. to over to uh, to Japan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're the ones that chased down away. Good man. Yeah. Anyway, but all, all I wanted to do was go to Sunset Strip and rock with you know Scorpion. So you know, gotcha, but, gotcha, gotcha. But, isn't that ironic though? I mean, doesn't yeah. that become ironic at the end? It's okay, man. Awesome, man. Well, I would love to come and see a show. It'd be great. Okay, I will make sure you got my uh, my info, man. You're on the list. So, uh, Jeff Bilson, thank you for being a really wonderful human being. I, uh, I love thank you. Your character dude i mean we need more of that so guys if you got here late make sure you go back like this thing on facebook instagram um if you go to youtube.com slash at access kevin you can subscribe to the channel make sure that you join and you can see the 279 other episodes go back and see last week's randy hansen episode it was awesome that was last week last week yeah oh, yeah cool I yeah will. God, he he actually pulled out the guitar played me a little bit of uh hey joe and i had goosebumps man I, I love that man. So, oh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> and he said the same thing about you, dude. I, it sounds to me like you've got family everywhere, you know? So, yeah. I, uh, I would consider Randy family, absolutely. I'm going to come out and see this last run of Foreigner. I cannot miss this. As man. you should. So, it's going to be, yeah. I don't know how close we get to, I don't know if we're doing Albuquerque or not, but oh, uh, you, you said know you're in Santa Fe, right? I'm in Santa Fe, but honestly, I've been living there six months and I've only been home three weeks. I've been, we're oh, doing. Okay. We're doing over 100 shows this year. Oh, that's true. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, somewhere our paths will cross. I'm going to find you, and I'll take you on a day off, man. I'd love to, to catch up. And, uh, awesome, yeah, we'll, man. I'll, I'll share my Richard Hittleman knowledge, you know, that, that I've learned in the last in the next month, right? So <laughs> thank you very much, man. I appreciate <laughs> this, you. buddy. I and uh, it, man. Well, great, great great Revolution awesome. Saints, everybody. Yeah. All right, buddy. Jeff Pilsen, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks again, my friend. Well, thank you. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.